think morning walks are my new thing that was so fun i was saying that i want to be more like walking less sedentary because all i do is sit i checked my steps the other day like my average steps per day and they were abysmal so that's one of my health goals for q2 of this year we're kind of through q1 we're through the new year q2 health goals is more steps more walking more movement because i just sit all day but hello if you're new here i'm clara if you're not new here thanks for coming back this is a day in my life in charleston started off the day on a little coffee walk and now i'm over on mount pleasant i am at lab core right now i'm about to head in and get my sample collected i purchased one of the lab core on demand vitamin deficiency tests because i want to establish some benchmarks to see like what my body is in need of like what supplements do i need to keep taking what supplements do i need to add in i just want to get some like good benchmarks just to know what's worth keeping in my rotation you know so let's run in and get that done because i did schedule an appointment so i got to make sure i'm there on time Oh, I'm an idiot. I'm already on one. <laughs> That's embarrassing. Quick and easy. There are over 50 different tests you can take. There's like nutritional ones, hormone ones, general wellness. I think that the thyroid and the hormone ones are major because especially as a young adult going to doctor's offices and scheduling your own appointments and like really navigating that whole sphere for the first time on your own is really intimidating. And sometimes it's hard to speak up in the moment in an appointment and like request additional testing or even worse, it just requires like a ton of back and forth appointments. So instead you can go purchase a test from LabCorp on demand. You just go into one of these centers to do the sample collection. You can like be a little bit more empowered your next doctor's appointment and bring those results with you to review with your doctor speaking of results the turnaround time on the test that i just took is one day so i should have those probably like tomorrow if this is your thing and you want to get some tests done you can use clara 10 for ten dollars off your first lab core on demand purchase or just use my link in the description box i already have my eye on the ovarian reserve test next i think that's the next one i'm gonna purchase and i'll probably use my own code on it i just think that'll be really empowering to figure out like my ovarian reserve so i think that's my next lab core on demand and i've just got to keep this bad boy on for like 10 more minutes she said and then i am back to normal right before i left for that appointment i went to a shopping event at j crew i just ran over really quickly to the store on king because they had a little pop-up going on they had cute little match boxes postcards and then they had this little print vending machine where these things came out so i got a tomato an olive and a can of sardines i just kept doing it until i got the ones that i wanted so if you're wondering why i'm so dressed up it's not for my phlebotomist at lab Corps. it was for the J. Crew event. I'm wearing a Princess Polly denim dress, J. Crew boots, and then a ton of necklaces because I haven't self tanned in a while and I was feeling very self conscious of how pale my neck was. So I was like, why don't I just distract with a ton of necklaces? This one's from Shop Kristen Jones. This one's from Free People. And then this one, if you remember and you've seen the video, is one that I actually thrifted when I was in Scotland. So I'm happy I got to break those out and I think that's a pretty cute little stack. Surprise, surprise. Today's lunch is a defined dish recipe. I am obsessed with this woman's cookbook. She has three of them. This is actually, yeah, three. This is the newest one. It's like dinners, but obviously they can be lunches too. I just followed the chili oil pork and cabbage stir fry on page 154 if you have the book and you're following along with me. I've made this one before, but it calls for Sichuan peppercorns, which are kind of hard to find. So every other time I've made this, I've just swapped that out for red pepper flakes, but I finally got my hands on them. I found them at World Market. Thank you to the person that told me they were there. So this is my first time truly trying the recipe, I guess, because this is the first time I'm using the actual peppercorns that it calls for. One of my favorites, it's just like a good bowl situation. You could meal prep this and like reheat it if you work from home. I'm not sure you would want to microwave cabbage at the office. That might get you a strike in the world of promotion. So maybe don't bring this into the office because I think the cabbage might get a little stinky, but it's a great meal, really easy. And if you're looking to cook for yourself more, follow this woman and get her cookbooks. Her recipes are unmatched. I'm gonna sit down on my computer with this and get some work done. Oh, my computer's at the couch. I'm not gonna eat this at the couch though. That's a recipe for disaster. And yes, I did change into yet another outfit because I filmed that cooking process for a reel and I thought that like this was like a cute thing to have in frame when I was cutting up vegetables. This is the new little dress I got on Amazon that I'll add to my storefront if you want. But I love changing my outfits, especially when I'm filming more than one video in a day because then when I post it, it doesn't look like it was like all batched on the same day. 
couple hours later, I'm done with my computer work for the day and I'm gonna start getting ready because I'm actually going to an event tonight. It's an event with J. Crew. So they did the shopping event this morning, like at the store, and then they're doing a dinner at Post House Inn. The shopping event was like open to the public and everything, but I think this is like a social media, like networking event type thing. I know Lauren was also invited, but she's in Hawaii right now, so she's not gonna be there. I asked if I could have a plus one because I just don't wanna go alone. I'm like very nervous to do things like this alone. And like, I don't know, I get like a lot of social anxiety when it comes to like networking events. Maybe some other COVID college grads will relate to this, but I've never had an in-person job interview. They've always been on Zoom. Most of my jobs and first impressions in a professional sense have always been virtual which is nice if you get anxiety but it's also bad because it like continues to fester and like you don't ever really rip that band-aid off so whenever I get invited to things like this I like to go with someone and this is the first time that I'm going to one where I have no idea who else is going hopefully I meet someone there but I'm going to go because I think it's good to flex that muscle and get out of your comfort zone and if you constantly avoid situations where you feel uncomfortable or you feel out of place then that's just gonna like spiral and it's gonna get worse. I'm getting out of my comfort zone tonight and going to this event. I mean, me going to a free dinner is hardly like hard work, but it's just a good thing to keep in mind. And if you notice yourself as you're growing older, like avoiding things that you might think are embarrassing or that you might not be good at, like a workout class, like a dance, cardio class or something like that that you just feel kind of silly. I think it's good to feel silly every once in a while, especially as you grow older because you don't wanna grow into that person that's you know never willing to try new things or only ever doing things that they know they're good at so there's my hot take for the day i'm gonna start getting ready i don't think i'm gonna shower i just got my hair done yesterday so if it looks like a little bit shorter that's why i got a dusting off of it and then i got a dark brown glaze just like my usual recipe whenever i go to the hair salon i don't really have somewhere i'm loving yet here i'm still kind of testing out a couple different places um so i don't have any like charleston hair wrecks so far but i just always ask for the same thing and it's it's usually pretty consistent no matter where I go if you ask for the same thing like a dark gloss um that's more like cool toned and then just a dusting I've learned that you have to say dusting if you don't want a lot taken off favorite dry shampoo ever the Bondi Boost HG this stuff is incredible and it smells like peppermint a couple of weeks ago when J Crew asked if I would be available for the dinner they sent me a link of new arrivals to choose from to wear to the event so I have this black dress you can't really see it right now that I think I'm gonna wear i have to try it on i hope it works but then i have this bag that i just got gifted from stod s-t-a-u-d it's like that brand it's called the stod tommy bag i bought one last summer from shop Bop and i love it these are like insanely good quality but they asked if i wanted one this year i don't know how they found me how they got my name how i was lucky enough to be selected for this but they sent me a bag and this is perfect this is like the ideal charleston summer bag i'm so excited to wear this so i'm hoping the two will go together let me try it on shut the front door look at how cute this dress is i thought it was gonna fit let me put my bag down i thought it was gonna fit kind of more like this but the slit or like the cutout in the side you can kind of play around with where you want it to sit and it kind of like shows your hips a little i really like this this is the back i need to take the tag off obviously and i do think that the bag is really cute with it but i'm really at a loss of how to accessorize like i need some sort of like necklace situation here but i'm getting overwhelmed everyone i've tried on just like doesn't look good so i think i'm gonna phone a friend and ask a friend with better taste what like accessory situation i should be wearing with this so let me see normally when i facetime people while i'm filming they don't answer is it my lucky day <laughs> Look at you, cutie. Hi. Hi. I need jewelry help. Danielle helped me decide on some gold earrings and then two little necklaces, the two that I typically wear, little clover, and it says Clara, which is honestly kind of considerate to wear a name necklace to a networking opportunity or somewhere you're gonna meet new people because if anyone forgets my name, it's written on my neck. I'm gonna go in, I just got here. Got my little bag, I'm feeling cute. And I designated my Rode lip balm as my car lip balm because it will stay warm in the humidity so it won't get gritty. If you have this and it has like the little sand pieces in it you have to like heat it up and it'll go away but you could also keep it in your car or somewhere warm and then it won't get gritty i'm also like 99 percent positive that i'm in an actual parking spot because like the pavement isn't painted right here 
So I think I can park right here. It's gonna be really awkward if I get towed. I'm back. I came or I went. I came, I went, I conquered. I drank a mocktail. Back to business. I'm going on a trip tomorrow. So I'm switching over some laundry and trying to figure out what load I should do next and kind of do a little mental packing in my head. Let's get that figured out. I really like this dress though. I'll link it in the description box if anyone else likes it. And now for my next load of laundry. I think I need some dark. I have a pet sitter staying here tomorrow. Well, I mean, not just tomorrow, the whole time that I'm gone. So I need to make sure this place is like clean and livable. So I should probably stay up to clean the kitchen. little update on my tooth if you missed it aka if you didn't watch my Breckenridge vlog then you might not know that I chipped my front tooth let me stop talking so you can see it a little bit better it's nothing major which is why I'm like not really in a rush to fix it but let me give you the rundown really quickly when I was probably like seven or eight I was in an accident I was really just like playing around with another kid and like our heads collided and my teeth shattered that they actually used the word either shattered or like broke or something anyways it was pretty extreme like the nerve was exposed like couldn't eat for like the day or two before we could get in to get it fixed anyways so that's just been like my reality for or as long as I can remember is that I've had composite bonding on a lot of my teeth actually from that accident because unfortunately they were adult teeth at that time. So that's been my reality. I've always been told by my dentists whenever there'd be like a tiny chip because bonding isn't like permanent foolproof. Um, it gets fragile over time. It yellows over time. Like it's something that you really have to like keep up with and get repaired and just like always have like a good cosmetic dentist on speed dial pretty much. So I've always been told by my dentist that like one day veneers would be like the ultimate repair fix for these because a lot of the times when people get veneers they just don't like their teeth so that's when they like shave them down like basically that's when people say like oh you're taking like perfectly good teeth and like adding veneers i could care less like if you want veneers you get veneers like it's your body but in my case i've just been in like damage control so it's always been kind of on my mind that i'm gonna get veneers at some point or do something more permanent i would never i don't really think you just like electively get crowns that's kind of more of like a bigger thing um but basically i've known that i'll probably need veneers soon on these teeth and it's not been in the very back of my mind until this chip because now i'm at the point where do I get more composite bonding to fix this or do I just like spring for the veneers? I was really worried that I was gonna have some like cold and hot sensitivity because of the size of this chip and I haven't. So that's why I'm not in like a crazy rush, but I have reached out to a couple dentists. So I'm gonna go to some and get a bunch of consultations and opinions on like if veneers is like something that I should do right now. But then like, as you get older, your gums recede. And I think, I don't know. I think veneers are in my future, but maybe that's something I get when I'm like 40 and I can just do some more composite bonding. Whatever is best for like the health of my teeth and I'm gonna get like a ton of dentist opinions. But yeah, whenever I mention veneers, people are like, don't get veneers. But I'm like, I'm just in damage control mode. And I feel like this is like the best example of it because stuff like this happens. And then if that had exposed the nerve and it had been super sensitive, then skiing in Breckenridge would have been like miserable because the wind would have just been hitting my teeth. So thankfully that chip didn't cause any additional sensitivity that I didn't already have. But that's what stinks about bonding and like having fragile teeth because it always happens at the worst time and it has the potential to ruin a trip. Like I could have had to postpone that trip if it was bad enough. Thankfully I didn't. If you saw it throughout the video, I feel like I have to give some like little disclaimers in all my videos now until I get it fixed because I feel like some people probably saw it and was like, what's going on with your teeth there, girl? But yeah, it's still chipped.
Good morning. Happy Thursday. It's the next day now, obviously. Got some laundry going. I'm leaving for a trip today. I think I mentioned that. So I'm about to put on a layer of fake tan. Finally, I haven't tanned in so long. I'm almost out of my favorite one. You know, you know, I use this one, the Bondi Sands Arrow. I have more coming from Amazon and it like delivers today, probably in the evening. So it's not going to get here in time. So I'm swapping out for the St. Tropez One Hour Express. I like this one too. I prefer that one if I'm marinating during the day because it dries better. This one will have to do. It's gonna look just as good. So I'm gonna hop in the shower, shave my legs, and throw a layer of that on before I go pick up my breakfast. Well, I just got a notification that the food is ready, so I should probably go there and then put the tan on. But the weirdest thing, I just looked down in the shower and my little belly button ring is gone. I don't know where it went. It's like one of those things that I got done and no, it wasn't high school, it was college. It was when I turned 18. So I don't know, it's not like a, it's just always been there. And I've never really thought about taking it out because it wasn't bothering me, but it's just gone. I don't know how long, I need to look back in pictures. I don't know where it went. And I'm kind of debating, should I order another ring to like replace it or my time just done with it? Weird, I wonder if I order one on Amazon, like I don't know how fast they close up. This might just be the end of an era for me of having a belly button ring in. Well, that's weird. I'm gonna go pick up the food eat and then put the tan on even though i wish i was developing a tan that's okay it'll be fine i can always wear it on the flight and then shower when i get to the hotel because i'm gonna shower when i get to the hotel anyways so maybe that's the new plan i'm just gonna take the car because i'm in a rush Don't get me wrong, I love a breakfast burrito from The Daily, but whenever I go in there, it's honestly just like, it's an experience. Have you ever been to a restaurant or like a business or something where you're like, do you even want my money? Like, I don't know, the vibes are just so weird in there lately. And they've started packaging the breakfast burritos like this, like in a little tinfoil wrap. I don't know that, I'm trying to think of some funny experiences. Like one time the lady went to like hand me my breakfast burrito, dropped it onto the ground, like the restaurant floor, picked it up and then handed it to me. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> I don't know, it's just one of those places where I'm like, you, you can tell that they don't need new customers to survive. They're at the other end of the spectrum of like the customer is right. The customer is always wrong there. Don't get it twisted. I did work retail, I worked food service. I know what it is like to be on the other side of the fence. But I think that sometimes because I know what it's like, it makes those interactions like 10 times funnier because I'm like, you really don't care. But if you're interested to go experience this for yourself, I get the breakfast burrito, add bacon to it because it doesn't come with a protein. So I add bacon and then an iced latte with whole milk. I don't do any flavorings or anything in my lattes. Currently pulling aside items that I would like to pack and then from here I pare it down and like be real with myself and know that I don't need all of this for literally like 50 hours in Boston. So this this is what I want to pack and now I will go through and like pare down to what I actually need to have. Okay, here's a question. Do you think that it's worth packing? Cause this is like really the only green article of clothing I own and I'm there for St. Patrick's Day, but is it worth packing this literally to wear it like one? Okay, Polly Slay in the background. She's just slaying. She's always slaying. All right, I, I still think I have way too much stuff. I love this skirt. That is so cute. It's looking good. There's a couple more things I need to fit in here. I think this jacket is gonna go on top of those shoes. And then I always put my valuables in my carry-on like personal item. But I think I'm gonna be able to do a carry-on. I might have to get rid of a sweater. That's what this bulging packing cube is. But all of my luggage is based. I'm obsessed with this brand. I think it's so thoughtfully designed. So if you need new luggage, look into this brand. I have very low expectations for this tan because it's super sticky and I just put tight clothing on. So this might not end well. But then again, everything I packed is like jeans and a sweater. So there's not gonna be much skin showing anyways. I really wanted to do my nails before the flight but I literally need to run out the door right now. So what I did is I like prepped them and then when I get to the hotel, I'm just gonna do them. So I'm gonna bring these, but I already did like my cuticles. I feel like I'm shaking because I'm <laughs> like so high strung right now trying to get out the door in time. But I removed my nail polish and then I prepped my actual nails so then I can just do the nails in the hotel room when I get there. Which I think brings us to the end of this vlog. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Make sure to subscribe and go follow me on TikTok and Instagram if you wanna see what I'm up to on more of a daily basis. Mainly follow me on Instagram because who knows what's going on with TikTok these days. But thank you again for watching. Let me know if there's anything in particular that you want to see on this channel. I'm so excited for videos this summer. I'll see you in the next video.